guys, welcome to the new episode of Hallmark Heartbeats, a podcast all about Hallmark movies. And today I am joined again by my friend Kayla, um, who's hosting with me for the next couple of weeks. And today we, our guest um, is the director of the newest Hallmark movie, Holiday in Harlem, Keith Powell. And also you have a very wide variety of acting background as well. Um, Some of my friends have said that they remember you from 30 Rock or something. Yes. Yeah, I was an actor. I was an actor for a very long time. Um, uh, I got my degree in directing actually uh, at NYU. And um, and I uh, but I always got work as an actor. And so I uh, worked as an actor for a very long time in television. And then I started directing for television. What made you want to get, go into directing after acting for so long? Uh, well, like I said, um, I, I started out as a director uh, oh, at sorry. NYU. Yeah, that's okay. Um, and, uh, and, you know, it was something that I always wanted to do. I kind of got caught up into acting, which is a wonderful career to have a fallback on. <laughs> um, and, uh, and then, uh, you know, the, there were opportunities that started presenting itself for me to go back into directing and, and, and then that's, here I am. I never, ever thought someone would say acting is the fallback. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's great usually it's like the other way around where something else is the fallback yeah. <laughs> and acting is the dream yep yep so it was good I've been very fortunate in my career I really really have yeah you also played on This Is Us that's where I know you from one of my favorite oh, yeah. movies I yeah. love it how was it working with a um, back cast? They're a lovely group of people. They're very tight knit. They are really very much like a family. And uh, it was great to kind of go in. The, uh, the very first day that I walked in, I was greeted with by everybody who knew who I was and what uh, other roles I had played before. So they're very also, they're just very welcoming to uh, guest casts. So uh, yeah, that was great. That was a good job. <laughs> theoretically yeah, you, i should still be on it so uh you're, you might you're, see me pop you're, up again you're still on it yeah well i i recur on it as his uh as his therapist oh yeah and, yeah. and, so, and so you know you might you might need a therapist every now and then hey i is is that is that the this is us studio in the background because it did look for no, 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 no. <laughs> no. You caught you caught me while I'm charging my car. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to go like, hey, we, I don't want a back uh, a behind the scenes tour of the uh, lot. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> but um, if you can you say hi to um, Milo <laughs> but to Milia, you, I mean, next time, next time I, I see him, I'll say hi. <laughs> we are huge Gilmore Girls fans, and I'm a Team Jess fan, and she is Team Logan's. So my dream. <laughs> we do another show with him. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> but I love anyway. It. So you are directing A Holiday in Harlem, which airs on Sunday. And I don't know if you've been seeing some of my posts, but (laughs) seriously, I am frustrated with the lack of promotion for this movie that Hallmark has been putting out. (laughs) No, no. Listen, I feel like, um, I feel like that, uh, we have been given some incredible time slots that a lot of people already are are going to be tuning into. So I I feel like I don't know. I mean I don't know what their decisions are in in terms of promotions for Hallmark, but I do feel like that it's it's some respect that they feel like they don't have to promote it because it's already going to be in some really lovely, great 
um, high viewership time slots. That's the way I look at it. A lot of people go to it. A lot of people on Facebook are telling me they didn't even know there was a movie coming out on Sunday because all of the all of the commercials are for open by Christmas. <laughs> yeah. And, and, yeah. And I'm sitting there going like. Yeah, trust me, I am frustrated with the channel myself as well. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I feel like, I feel like uh, you know, my grandmother used to say to me something that would always drive me crazy, but I think it's absolutely true. And it, it's what's yours will know your face. And I feel like the audience will find the show, uh, this, this movie, um, and, and they'll, they'll, um, want to keep watching it over and over again. So I, I, I feel like what's ours will know our face. So what, what happens will happen. And what, what, what yes, what will be, will be. <laughs> que sera, sera, right? Que sera, sera. <laughs> I, hate, I used to hate that song. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it stars Olivia Washington and Will Adams. Olivia is obviously Denzel's daughter which we will be talking about later <laughs> um this is your first film for hallmark how is it working the film what is the movie about can you give us some uh, insight on what to expect? yeah um i i think it's a, a beautiful story about a young woman who comes back home um for christmas and, and rediscovers what where her roots are i think that that's what the movie is about i think the movie is about um understanding history and heritage and and where your roots are and i think that for for black people in general i that's something that that's what drew me to the project and what's something that i've always been passionate about in my storytelling is, is that um is that black americans are um uh, have in history been deprived of their roots and their heritage and their history Right. Um, all yes. we can do is uh, go back to uh, we can only trace our ancestry as far back as slavery. And before then, we don't know what happened to us. And so um, and so what I have been a, a major passion of mine is telling stories about reclaiming our history. And mm. I really believe that this is a story that's about that. It's a story about a young lady who, for, you know, various reasons that you find out in the film ran away from the place that she grew up and and really understand and reconnects with a community um that that made her who she is um and, uh, and that's that's kind of the thing that really inspired me to to direct the movie and 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 to, to sign on to it and say yes to it and wow that um, sounds really good yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <This> deep <laughs> yeah. I get a little heady sometimes. <laughs> well, I'm, I, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of, you know, the TV show, Who Do You Think You Are? Yeah. Yeah. I have noticed a, that, like you said, a lot of, there's a huge difference when you watch a show when the star is white versus when the star is black. A lot of times the stars can you know, if they're white, they can like go all the way to England or <laughs> Ireland or whatever, right. link their family tree to like the Queen of England from the 1400s or something. <laughs> and then like, you know, with the black stars, they just link to like the last slap, slap to uh, the plantation that and their family I worked in or whatever. You know, I I um, lived in Harlem for a very long time. Harlem is has such deep history yes. to it. It is a beautiful, beautiful uh, legacy that Harlem has brought on. The, the, you know that the writer Monique very uh, Monique Matthews very beautifully um, invoked all throughout this story. So. Uh, you know, I mean, it's a pleasure to, to kind of talk about Black history in that way. Yes. Um, you actually filmed this in Connecticut, though, not in Harlem. <laughs> so, did. 
<laughs> we did do a day. I keep telling everybody, I fought really hard. <laughs> we did do a day in Harlem. We did. <laughs> we spent a day shooting in Harlem. Um, you won't be able to tell which is which. I swear. I took very painstaking efforts to make sure. Well, I mean, what were some difficulties in making Connecticut Harlem? Well, uh, the difficulty <laughs> being Connecticut's not Harlem. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it was a challenge. Um, what I, I'm a, I'm a big um, fan of architecture. And so what I wanted to do is, is the art director went down to um, Harlem and spent a day taking photographs of buildings so that we could uh, come back up and match them to Connecticut. We shot in Connecticut for tax purposes, but um, but it was so important to me that architecture was repeated in Connecticut. Um, and so um, there's a vibrancy in there. There's an energy in Harlem and Harlem's architecture that I it was important for me to painstakingly kind of recreate. And so we had a, a bit of a challenge, you know, looking around Connecticut for the particular architecture that we were we we needed to recreate but you know we we spent a long time in location scouting and we took a lot of photographs and we looked at a lot of places and my i know that my producers got uh frustrated with me every now and then because i'd go this is in harlem <laughs> um, um but we finally found the right patchwork of things to kind of come together and make it feel like it was a vibrant, uh, it was it was you know the actual place. Where is that door? Um, the steps or whatever that put in a lot of the in the promo pics and as well as in the poster. Where is um, that? I don't know. It's various places. I know that in the if if you're watching um, the character Tina Lifford's character, the Mama Bell. Mm -hmm. um, her character lives in this beautiful Harlem brownstone that reminds me of my aunt and uncle's Harlem brownstone that they live in currently. And, uh, and I, we found a place in Connecticut um, that recreated that. So, um, so if you're looking at a, a beautiful brownstone where... Um, um, Mama Bell comes in and out of it's probably the one that we found in Connecticut that's cool yeah um, do you have any behind the scenes scoops you'd like to share mm. about how awful Olivia Washington is no. <laughs> I don't I don't I as a matter of fact um, I was very blessed to be given a, a, a large amount of creative freedom um, in this. And a lot of that creative freedom uh, extended to them allowing me to um, uh, pretty much pick the cast. I don't, I think everybody in that cast is someone that I know um, and that I've worked with before uh, or just have known socially or have just been a fan of. Yeah. And I asked for them. And so what I really loved about this process is that that the set very much felt like a family because it was. And actually my family is actually in it. <laughs> um, um, so um, so my, my wife plays um, uh, a big role in it. She, has, um, she plays Katrina who is, um, who is Caleb played by Will Adams' sister. Mm. Um, and, uh, and scattered throughout the movie are extras that are my aunt and my twin cousins and my Aww. little cousin. And yeah, we brought up a bunch of, my, you know, like a lot of my family's from Philadelphia. So they drove up and I said, do you want to just be extras for a day? And they were extras for two days. They, they really, you know. My um, uh, two of my aunts are in this movie. Um, um, three of my cousins are in this movie. 
it is, you know, the, the film is just packed full of people. So I guess all that to say, um, there was no behind the scenes drama because it all felt like we were just like shooting a family movie. Olivia, I've known for years. And I think that she is um, a bona fide shining star. And I, and I really said to um, uh, Hallmark that we had to cast her because I thought that um, there's nobody else that could be as radiant and grounded and, and lovely as Olivia. And she brought it every single day. That's I, nice. I'm so I'm so proud of this cast. So no yes. drama <laughs> but what about Will? Was this like your first time working with Will? him? No. Um, Will, I personally asked for Will. Um, Will doesn't know it, but he's the only person that auditioned. <laughs> <laughs> I guess he'll find out if he gets we'll this. <laughs> um, no, I, 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 I don't know why I, it, it was, we were in the middle of pre-production and I just had a dream where I've known Will for a little while. Um, he went to graduate school with my wife and um, uh, they didn't go at the same time, but, but through alumni collect, you know, connections, they've, they knew each other. And um and so I've known Will and he's done some readings for me in the past. And I just, there's just one night in, in, uh, you know, when we were still in pre-production where I had a dream that Will was saying all the lines. And then when I read the script again, I couldn't get him out of my head. Like I, I literally could not imagine any other human being playing it. And so we were still, I believe we were still, um, we hadn't fully locked in Olivia yet. I, I think that like the her agents were talking to Hallmark and they were trying to figure out what that situation was going to be like and what their schedule was. And, and, um, and so during that process, um, I said, I, I called Hallmark and I said, it has to be this guy named Will Adams. Mm. And they're like, well, we've never seen him do anything before. And I was like, hold on a second. I'm going to have him put a take together right now. <laughs> and he did. Um, and he did. And he killed it. And he, um, they said yes immediately. And uh, yeah, I, I, I saw no one else but Will in the park. That is what if he did kill it? <laughs> no, if he did kill the I knew you. Or I like, knew you. can you imagine? I he no, I knew he would. He's he's a he's such. Yeah, I what I had said to Hallmark, where are you? Where else are we going to find someone who's the right age and looks like he works with the character and is as good looking and as good of an actor? <laughs> <laughs> It was very important that he was a good actor and he was good looking. <laughs> well, um, Olivia is also Denzel's, Denzel Washington's daughter, um, Academy yes. Award winning director, actor, producer, like God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> He's a legend. Yes, of course. I mean, he's like one of those one name people where you don't even need. Yeah, you don't have the to rest say anything. Name. Huh? Yeah. Yes, I agree. <laughs> did Did he ever come to visit on set? Or no, no. <laughs> I did a um, I I met Olivia uh, years ago when I did a play in San Diego. And Olivia was doing a play at the same theater company, but a different play next door. So the theater had two the theaters mm -hmm. and we were in one theater and Olivia's was in another. And Olivia was my neighbor um, in the, in the housing where all the actors were housed. So she, her and I would talk to each other all the time. because She was my next door neighbor. And then one day I'm, you know, like in these, like this crappy artist housing, <laughs> um, 
um, I'm like getting out of the shower, about to go into rehearsal. And I see Denzel Washington outside my window going to visit Olivia next door. And uh, that was a weird experience. Just like seeing Denzel like outside your window after you just came out of the shower. (laughs) (laughs) Um, um, And so he came to, you know, he came to see Olivia um, in San Diego for that. But no, he didn't come to Connecticut. But did you at least, um, have you met him before at least? Outside of the one time, outside of your... (laughs) I had met him once before, yes. uh, At an award show. I met him at an award show. During my my run on 30 Rock. I feel like if I ever get to meet Denzel, I would probably faint. Um, He's a very, like, down-to-earth guy. Like, um, he definitely knows that he is Denzel Washington. (laughs) (laughs) Very. But he is very charming and... Um, sweet natured and human and down to earth and lovely. That's good to hear. Um, yeah. Okay, so during a possible IATSE strike just a couple of months ago, you um, one of the crew members had said that you, you working with you for this film, you made sure that everybody was safe and you kept the hours pretty um you know reasonable for everybody and first of all thank you for that because you you know you you you, you show that you're like you know it is possible you don't have to overwork kind of thing absolutely how did you do that though because i've I've heard a lot of people say oh you know with all these productions it's not possible and stuff like that with the short deadlines and stuff um uh you it's about being prepared it's about being prepared and knowing what you want. And I think that a director is very uh, influential on a set. Um, um, and, you know, the director has to be the bad guy sometimes and tell people it's not going to go this way or it is going to go this way. And and the only way that a director can do that and keep it efficient is being prepared. Um, those two weeks or three weeks that we had before we started shooting, um, uh, every day I, I went back and and talked with my first AD extensively about how each shooting day will go and what I'll shoot each day. Um, every day I uh, they have in, in uh, directors uh, put together what they call shot lists. Yeah, and a shot list mm-hmm. is basically just a plan for the day. And I was, uh, it was very important to me that um, not only uh, did we create a shot list, because not every director um, puts a shot list together and and not every um, production needs a shot list, frankly. But but it was important to me in order for us to stay efficient and to, to go quickly and not waste everybody's time for everyone who wanted to see the shot list to get a copy of it. Mm. And that was super important in our distribution. Mm-hmm. And so every single day, um, every single night, right, bef- uh, right before, right after we've wrapped for the night, everyone got a copy of the shot list for the next day. And so they all, everyone knew uh, exactly what we were shooting, when we were shooting it, how we were shooting it, and for how long we were shooting it for. Um, and, you know, obviously there's always... Uh, difficulties that happen and and best laid plans and everything but pretty much we were able to stick to it and we were able to get all the things that we wanted to do including you know shots that we didn't think were going to work um um and we were just able to experiment and we were and and by staying efficient and close to that shot list we probably had nine, 10 hour days, which normally a set has 12 hour days plus two more hours um, for, for certain members of the crew. So, so normally a set has 14 hour days. Um, we were doing maximum 11 or 12 hour days. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Cause like I've had to, 
uh, explain it to other people uh, from our the TV show that we do that we run the other podcast for. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I, I've been explaining to him because I have a media degree. So I do understand some of the behind the scenes stuff that you're talking about because they yeah. introduced it to us while we were of in course. college. And so I'm like, dude, these people work hours upon hours and then they go back and do it again the next day (laughs) they don't get too much time to sleep so you've got to be respectful of the people that make it (laughs) it's very very true there uh, people don't realize the long hours and the grueling manual labor that is involved in um in in film production and uh and it is so important for a director to be respectful of people's time and energy and and it drives me crazy when um when when directors don't really know what they want when they arrive on their on the set and and then therefore it wastes everybody's time i'm also a very big believer in rehearsal because i believe that if you can if you rehearse and you take the time to rehearse then um, the actors are all on the same page by the moment you press record on that camera. And it makes shooting more efficient because you don't have to do multiple takes of everything trying to get the actors up to um, performance level. A lot of the secret is pretty much be prepared. (laughs) Yeah. No, I mean, that's good. It's just crazy that people... It also makes the time in the editing room a little bit easier, too. It does. (laughs) It really does. (laughs) Yes. Editors seem to to like me because because, uh, people are at performance quality on take one. See, I am an an editor. That's, I mean, that's what I wanted to do. And so I'm like, I understand that aspect of it. So I, I guess... I'm just yeah. thinking technically here. <laughs> it saves every, if you're prepared, it saves everybody time from from the PA to the lead producer. I mean, everybody everybody um, benefits from a prepared director. Yep. You're like literally the boss of the set, so everybody like you know. I mean, it, yeah, you can always talk about. Yeah, it, like, I don't know if, if the boss of the set, I actually, I believe actually the first AD is the boss of the set. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I am the creative boss of the set, I'd say. I feel like, um, um, and, and, and I also don't even know if I agree with that, because then you've got producers and you've got writers and, and television is a writer's medium. I, I... I would say that a director is a general in an army. Mm. And, um, you know, um, the general, you know, has bosses and um, everyone reports to uh, the president, you know, you serve in the (laughs) pleasure of the president. Um, um, So there's always hierarchy. There's always plans. There's always people above you. But you, but I do believe that a director is a facilitator of making sure all the various departments are working, are in harmony, and are all on the same page. Mm. Sounds like a good analogy. <laughs> um, would you like to do work with Hallmark again? Yeah, I love them. I I would like to go back to Hallmark as a producer. Mm. Um, and as a matter of fact, I've uh, I'm already scheduled meetings to to pitch them projects. Um, um, yeah, I, I, en- I enjoyed m- my experience on Hallmark. I very much would love to go back and, and work with them again. Yeah. I, Hallmark, as you know, is like try to diversify, do more diversity yeah. stuff. So I feel like this is something that, you know, they would be interested in. The- I hope so. I hope so. I, I think they will. I, they're, they're just, a, um, the, the, the executives that I've worked with at Hallmark are actually some of the most um, uh, 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 lovely, thoughtful, thoughtful and accommodating network executives I've ever worked with. Um, that that for the for the network ex- executives that I worked with, 
um, they placed story first. And it was really lovely to see. That's good. Do you have yeah. any other projects coming up? I do. I have a bunch of projects coming up. Um, uh, uh, next week, uh, I'm going to... Um, I'm uh, an episode of uh, of a show on Apple TV Plus, um, uh, a show called Dickinson, um, about the life of Emily Dem- about the early life of Emily Dickinson. I directed an episode of that. It's one of the most creatively fulfilling experiences of my life. Uh, um, so it'll air on November nineteenth. Um, my episode is episode three hundred five. Um, and, uh, I, I'm directing a, sh- I directed a show in Atlanta called Single Drunk Female. Um, <laughs> that sounds fun. <laughs> it was, it was a great, um, experience that'll be airing in the new year, um, uh, uh on Freeform. And then I have a couple other things that I can't talk about. Of course, this is us. We'll see you on This Is Us, I'm sure. Maybe, maybe this is us. I'm a huge yeah, we're, we both us. watched This Is Us, so yeah. <laughs> I'm a huge This Is Us fan. Yeah, you, you may see me. You may see me. <laughs> I'm sad that it's the last season. I mean, we know it's going to be half, but I know the uh, writer was talking about like they don't have but a I think they, of that, ep- of that creatively, show. I think that that actually creatively makes a lot of sense. Um, it's a lot of it's a lot of episodes to have to, to, to produce and keep a story running and they've done it so brilliantly. I think, I think you would start to not like the show if, if it went beyond this because they'd have to stretch things out and stuff. So. Yeah. 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 It took, a, it took them like two seasons to tell us how Jack died. <laughs> 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 yeah. I, I that was the one episode where I like surprisingly could stop. He doesn't cry. cry. We just watched a major <laughs> character get killed off the resident, and we <laughs> love her boat. We love her to death. Emily Van Camp. She just left the show, yeah, and okay. uh, and she didn't cry. And I'm like, how do you not cry over that? <laughs> the Jack dying had me cried for two days. I oh, I believe that. I believe that. Like two days. Oh, I was like, he survived the fire. How did he die and later? Oh I love God. it. I love it. But anyway, thank you so much for letting us talk to you. Do you have any questions for, that, for us? No, no. Thank you guys so much for, for holding a space for the holiday in Harlem. I, I believe that it's uh, the best Hallmark Christmas movie they have this year. I mean, you know, maybe I'm biased. <laughs> but um, I'm I'm so proud of it. I'm so proud of the work that we did on it. And, and I'm so proud of this cast, which is just a lovely cast. I think Monique put together a really lovely script. And I and I'm really um, I'm really proud of it. And I and I'm, I can't wait for people to see it. 